So let's start by talking about search topics. So there are three main categories of search. There's blind search. There's informed search. We know about branch and bound and its variations and A star, but actually British Museum is optimal because if you're going to look at every possible path, you will find the shortest path. So it's an extremely stupid search to do because it'll take forever, but it is technically optimal. Then what about A star? Will A star with an admissible heuristic always find the shortest path? The answer is no. Um, unless you do this trick with the extended set that Professor Winston called A star 3. So A star with a consistent heuristic. Examples of the other types of search to see how they're different from each other. So if we go back to the screw case problem from lecture, it's something like this. So an 
admissible heuristic, I think someone said this earlier, is one that always an underestimate, or is never an overestimate. They could be perfectly correct, too. a pair of nodes. So we would look at for all nodes n1 and then for all nodes n2. <laughs> We're going to check. We're going to compare the heuristics, the heuristics between them. The heuristic from each node to the goal. Take the difference of those. We don't care which heuristic is bigger, we just care what the difference is, so we'll take the absolute value of that. And that should be less than or equal to the distance, shortest distance, between the two nodes. So if we look at what that means in a graph, we have some node n1, some node n2 with some path between them. They each have some shortest path to the goal that might go through a bunch of nodes. And then they each have a heuristic distance to the goal. So what this is saying is the difference between these heuristic distances should be less than or equal to this path length. And we're going to see what happens if you don't have that condition in this graph, and then you get screwed by your heuristic. Another thing to note with these definitions is the admissible definition is very similar to the consistent one, except that we're setting n2 equal to g. So if node 2 is the goal node, then this term goes to 0, this term goes there, and here n2 becomes g. So those are very similar definitions. So let's see what happens if we're doing a star on this graph. We're going to start at node s. If we extend node S, what, where can it go? A or B. A or B. Then how do we decide which one to extend S? Um, the path length plus the heuristic. Yeah, the path length plus the heuristic. Because we're doing A star. So we'll do path length to, to A is 1, plus heuristic is 100. B, we have path length is zero is one plus the heuristic is zero. So what do we extend next? B. We can keep track of the order in which we extend B. We could also keep extended set or extended list. 
we would have S and then B. So we extend B, where does B go? C. Because we can't go back to S because then we would have a loop in our path. Okay, so C, the path length is 1 plus 10, which is 11. And we have a heuristic of 0. So now what do we extend? A or C? C. Yeah, so if we were doing just path length, it would be A. Well, if we, if we were doing just path length, we would have already extended A first. But we're adding up these numbers, so C is going to be next. So this is the third node we're extending. So we extend C, where does it go? G. Does it go anywhere else other than G? A. Yeah, so be careful of that. Even though, as humans, we can see the path to A is going to be a dead end. We still have to list that because the algorithm doesn't know where that's going. So now this path to A will be 12 because we're going around through C plus the heuristic 0. And at G we have 111 plus 0. So now what happens? Are we done? No, because we want to extend all of the paths until they're all at least as long as our path to the goal. So what do we extend now? This A with the smaller value. Okay, but it turns out that's a dead end. It's Oh, that's what's wrong. Okay. I thought the same done familiar. That was supposed to be a good call. Okay, so that one's actually bigger, so we're extending this A. So it looks like this A goes to C, and that's the fourth node we're extending. And then C we have. 2 plus 0. So this is where our heuristic was inconsistent. Another way you can tell a heuristic is inconsistent is if the total of the path length plus the heuristic decreases as you add a node to the path. And that's bad news because that means that now we've come up with this shorter path to C that we missed earlier because we found that path to C. So we're using an extended set. So what's going to happen next is we're going to say, oh, we should extend C. That's already been extended, so we won't extend it again. And then it looks like we extend G because that's the shortest. And we could add G to this list. Putting G on the list is optional because we're not actually giving it any children. Well, I guess we would still call it extending, so let's put it on the list. And so now we found a path to G. Is that the shortest path? No. No. So this intelligent extended set thing over here. You'd only do that if the problem specifically says to use this more complicated implementation of an extended set. But it seems like the intelligent thing to do in this case would be to say, oh, well, even though we've already extended C, the last time we extended C, it had a path length of 11. But now we found a better path to C. So we're going to keep track of this new value in our extended list. And now we'll extend C, and it'll go to B e and G. And we have what's that, B with 12, and G with 1 or 2. And so then we would extend B. Well, would we extend B? What happens next? B is already there. Yeah, so B is, B is in this list. And if we were keeping track of our values, that was 1. And so we would not extend B again because 12 is bigger than 1, so this is not a better path to B. So basically what we're doing is we're not extending things that are in the extended set unless you find a better path to them. But that's only if you're doing this specific implementation. And so then we would get this path to G and we would actually get the shortest path. So that's this case for A star. Any questions on that? Okay, so let's see how some of these other search methods work. So we're going to use this graph from the 2015 final. In this graph, I think we have a hobbit who's trying to get to Mordor at M. So the goal node is not always G. In this case, the goal node is M. And the hobbit is starting at S and trying to get to M. So let's say we do British Museum first. Does British Museum use the path lengths? Is it an informed search or a blind?
blind search. Blind. So I, I guess this is sort of an edge case because if you were trying to find the shortest path, then you could enumerate all of them and figure out how long they were, but British Museum doesn't require path lanes. Does it need heuristics? No, so we're just going to extend all the nodes to everywhere they can go. And you could use, do this using depth first or breadth first search, but it doesn't really matter for British Museum as long as you end up with all possible paths in the end. So it looks like S can go to A, B, or C. Where can A go? B or M. We'll put those in alphabetical order. And then B can go to A and C. It looks like C can go to B or M. So then if we have S, A, B, where can that go? That can only go to C. And from there, it's only going to be able to go to M. We can't go any further because we don't want loops in our path. And then similarly, S, A, M is going to sort of spiral in and go through C and B. How about S, B, A? Well, S, B, A is over there. So that's going to go to M and then C. And similarly, S, B, C will go around through M and A. We're almost done. This is going to be symmetric. So S, C, B can go to A and then to M. And then S, C, M can go to A and B. So if I did that right, these are all the possible paths you could take starting from S going through this graph until you get stuck. And we can see that some of these paths reach the goal earlier, some of them reach, them, reach it later. But they all reach it eventually in this case. So let's see what search we're doing next. Yeah? Why are you going like past M if M is your goal? Yeah, that's a good question. Because British Museum is a blind search and it doesn't even know what it's looking for, so it's just oh. going to give you every possible path. Okay. Yeah, so in, in any intelligent search method, you would stop once you reach your goal. But this is just telling you every possible path starting from S. So there, there isn't really a formal procedure for British Museum. Like, there are various ways you can implement it, but you don't have to worry about the right way to implement it, as long as you get all the paths. So let's see what happens if we do hill climbing. Does hill climbing use path plate? It uses a heuristic. So it does not use path plate, it uses a heuristic. So we'll start at S, we'll write down the heuristic value is 0. So it looks like next we have to extend S because that's our, that's our only node. So if we keep track of what we're extending, that's the first thing we're extending. And that can go to A, B, and C. So if we write the heuristic values, we have 50 at A, 4 at B, 7 at C. So what do we extend next? B, because that's the smallest heuristic value. So it looks like S, B, we can reference this tree, it goes to a and C, and those will have heuristics of 50 and 7. What do we extend next? This B, C, or the right C? The lower one? So, yeah, so, so this is a, where hill climbing and best first are going to differ. Because hill climbing is really a depth first type of search. So you can imagine that you're walking up some mountain and it's sort of terrain that goes up and down. And at every point, you just want to go up as much as you can. And in this case, up means going forward toward the goal from the place you're currently at. So if we had a little person walking here, they would be starting at S, and going to B, and then next they're going to take a step in some direction from B. So they're going to either go to A or C, whichever one looks more up, which in this case means smaller heuristic. So which one would they go to? C. 
so that's why we're going to extend this C instead of that one. Because this little person who's walking along doesn't actually remember what happened when they looked around a few steps ago. So then we extend this C and it goes to M with a heuristic of zero. And then we extend this and we found a path. We have one, two, three, four. Those are the nodes we extended. So this might not be the shortest path, but it's a path that we found fairly quickly using hill climbing. Yeah. Which search do we need to extend the last one before just reaching the goal and then ending and then extending the, the, the goal and then ending? Yeah, so the question is do we extend this? Do we just find an M or do we have to extend that path? Yeah. So for the non-optimal searches, either way would work, but by convention we generally say don't return this path until you dequeued it, which is effectively when you try to extend it. And that's just so that all of the searches work the same way. That's what happened in lab two. Okay, so that's hill climbing. So best first is going to be similar. We'll see where it differs. So again, we'll start with S. Does best first use a heuristic? Yeah. Does best first use path length? No, it doesn't. So these informed searches in the informed heuristic branch, those use a heuristic but not a path length. So they're actually never going to be guaranteed to give you the shortest path. Because you can imagine the heuristic with zero at every node, that's going to be admissible and consistent by the definition, but it gives you no information, so they might not give you the shortest path. Okay, so we'll start by extending S. We get A with 50, B with 4, and C with 7. So best first is going to be like hill climbing, except that it remembers the nodes that it saw at other levels of the tree, and it's, re it's expanding the one that's most heuristic overall. So what are we going to extend next? B. So that's the same as hill climbing. We're extending B second. We get A and C. Now what? We have these two Cs that have the same heuristic value. How do we decide which path to extend? The one that's at the lower level. The one at the lower level? Or like lower depth. The one that's lower down in the tree? Lower depth. That one? So so depth goes this is zero depth, that's one, and this is this is deeper in the tree. So actually this is gonna be a tie, so we're going to just arbitrarily break the tie alphabetically. So we have a path S B C and we have a path S C. And if you look at those as words which one would come first in the English dictionary? <coughs> SBC. So we're going to do that one first. And if you put your nodes alphabetically in the tree, then that's always going to be the path that's further left in the tree. So we'll extend this C, and that goes to M with a heuristic of zero. So now what do we extend? actually return this path, so we've just put this path on our queue. But we're going to extend this one next because zero is the smallest heuristic value of all the ones available. So we'll extend that and it turns out best first got the same path as hill climbing in this case, but it won't always. Okay, let's try deep search. <coughs> Heuristic. It's in the same category as hill climbing and best first. 
And we're just going to keep track of the heuristic values. And we'll extend s because that's the only thing to do. And we get a, b, and c with their heuristic values 50, 4, and 7. But now we have this beam width of 2. What does that mean? Yeah, so we're going to keep the best two paths at this level. So which ones are the best two? B and C. B and C. So we're going to get rid of that one and just hold on to those two. And then it looks like B is the best one, so we'll extend that. And we get A and C. We only have two things at this level so far, so we're trying. Beam is going to be more like a breadth first search because we're going to expand everything on the second level before starting to expand things on the third level. So that means next we'll expand this C and we get B and M. B with 4 and M with 0. Sorry, why yeah. did you expand that C? Why the C? Yeah. Yeah, so beam is going to be more like breadth for a search, where okay. you do it one level at a time. Okay. So at each level, you keep track of two paths, and then you extend those, and then keep only two from the next level. So now we have more than four, more than two paths at this level, so we'll have to get rid of some of them. Which two should we keep? B Zero and four, because those are the smallest heuristic values. So we'll get rid of these guys. And then we're going to extend both of these starting with the best one. So we extend this M0. And hey, look, we found a path. So we're done there. We could try beam with a different width just to see how it compares. Let's try beam with a 1. Let's see what that does. So we start with. S, we extend that and we get A, B, and C, 50, 4, and 7. Which ones of these do we keep? Only B, because we're only allowed to keep one here. So we'll get rid of that and that. So here you can see how beam is going to give sort of different results depending on the beam width. And here we did keep B, but then we got rid of its children. Here our only option is B, so hopefully it leads to the goal. So we extend B and we get A and C, 50 and 7. So it looks like we're going to get rid of A, 50, because we can only keep one thing at this level. So that's the second thing we extended. Then C is going to be the third thing. We'll extend C and it goes to M. Is that right? Yeah, C goes to M with 0. And then we extend M, and we have a path. So there's two examples of beam search. And if you want, you can try other beam widths at home and see how they differ. I think beam width for this graph 3 and higher gives you the same thing, but it's different from 1 and 2. Let's try one more search with this. We're going to do branch and bound with an extended set and no heuristic. So we'll start with S. Are we using a heuristic? No, are we using path length? Yeah. Yeah. So the path length at S is going to be zero. We'll extend S, and it still goes to A, B, and C. But now we're keeping track of path length instead of heuristic. So it looks like our path lengths are going to be 1, 7, and 10. So now, well, the one thing we have to do is keep track of this extended set. So far, we've extended x. So we'll put that there. What do we extend next? A. because that is the shortest path so far. So we extend A, and we get B and M. Looks like S, A, B will add 3 to the path, so we get 4. How about S, A, M? 
101. Okay, so now we've extended A. That's the second thing we extended. Now what do we do? We go with B4. B4, yeah, because that has the smallest path length. So right now what we're doing is we're looking at all of the nodes in the tree that haven't been extended yet and finding the one with the smallest path length, which is this B4. So add B to our extended set. We'll extend it, and it looks like B goes to C. And that has a path length. So we add 4 and get 8. So now what do we extend? So B7 has the shortest path length. But this is where we end up using our extended set. So it looks like B is already in the extended set, and we're not even going to compare path lengths because we're just using a normal extended set where you don't keep track of the path length. So we just say, oh, we've extended B so far, we're not going to do that again. So then what do we do? C8. So we're going to <coughs> extend that, and it goes to M for the path length. We add 10, and we get 18. And we'll add C to our extended set. Now what happens? Do we know that this is the shortest path yet? No. No, because this one still could be shorter. So we look at this, but we've already extended C. It's in our extended set. So we're not going to extend that. Now is this our shortest path? Yeah. yeah. So we can add M to our extended set. And the path we get is S, A, B, C, M. Is that guaranteed to be the shortest path in the graph? So branch and bound with no extended set and no heuristic will definitely give you the shortest path because it's always extending the shortest path so far. And path length is the ground truth. It's not like a heuristic that can lie to you. And so the only difference here is we're using an extended set, but because there's no heuristic, we're always extending the shorter path first. So that means that whenever you see a node that you've already extended, the path length is going to be the same length or longer. So that means that this is guaranteed to give you the shortest path. So one thing is in the first basic search lecture, it, he wrote on the board best first search, but didn't actually explain what that was. So in order to understand what it was, what it is, we're going to briefly look back at depth first search and breadth first search. So one way you can think about these is by imagining that this is your agenda, which could be a queue or a stack. And here's the top path in the agenda. We're going to take it out and expand it to get a bunch of new paths. And in depth first search, would we want to put these new paths back into, in this case, the top of the agenda or the bottom if we're taking stuff out of the top? From the top. Oh. From the top. So it's a stack structure. So we put these guys back into the top. That's like a stack. And you've probably seen this a lot of times before because it's got just depth first search and depth first search. But then in depth first search, we do the same thing where we take one out, expand it. And this time we would put them into the bottom of our, of our structure. So then it would be more like Q. So best first search is going to be sort of like a cross between the two, where it actually doesn't matter which end you put the paths into. It. Again, we'll have our agenda and take out the best path. This time, best is defined by a heuristic. So when we say best, we're actually talking about the path with the best heuristic value. So we'll take that out. We'll expand it and get some new paths. But this time, we're just going to put them anywhere into the agenda. And then we're going to sort the entire agenda. So best first search ends up being more computationally intensive in terms of sorting, because you have to sort everything each time. 
but that way you're always pulling out the path that looks best according to your risk deck. And sort of in between best first and depth first, we have hill climbing. Which is where we take the best path out, we expand it. But this time we're going to just sort the new paths. And then put those into the top of the stack, just like in depth for search. Are there any questions on this? You've probably seen most of these before. Next we can also talk about beam search just to complete the set. Beam search is one of the more confusing ones. It's sort of like breadth first search, except that we're going to limit how many paths we have at a time and we're going to take into account the heuristic. So if these paths are all the same length, we'll take one of them out and expand it and get a bunch of paths that are one longer. And then we're going to take these and sort them. But we have a beam width which limits how many paths we can keep. So if we say that the beam width is 3, then we're only going to keep the best three of these paths. And we're going to put the best ones into the bottom here. So we would have our old shorter paths and then the best of the new paths. So at every level you have at most the beam width of paths. And that was originally because old computers weren't very powerful computationally, so this would do due to memory restrictions. Doesn't this not necessarily terminate? I mean, none of the searches necessarily terminate. But yeah, I guess beam would be less likely to find the, the shortest path, or to find a path than something like hill climbing or best first. But yes, that's true. So there was a request to look at the different types of search and when you would use each type of search. I guess first, do we want to do more on extended sets? Or does this make sense? Is this good? OK. So let's talk about how these searches are different from each other and when you would use each one. So I'm going to make a table with all of these searches, and we can look at some properties that we might have. I guess we can do this over here. So first I'll put in all the properties and then you can start thinking about which properties each search has. So whether the search uses a stack, which is adding stuff on the front of agenda. Whether it uses a queue, which is adding stuff to the back of the agenda. Whether the search sorts the agenda. start with those and try to figure out which searches apply to each.
does all the types of search. You can also think about whether they have a size limit on the agenda. Whether they use a cost function. is going to add paths to return to the agenda. This hill climbing is sort of like DFS with a heuristic. About, well, we can, let's go come back to those. Which ones use a queue? DFS uses a queue. And how about in the heuristic section? What, how does best first work? the entire agenda. Yeah, so best first is going to sort the entire agenda. So it doesn't matter whether you use a stack or a queue structure because you're sorting the whole agenda anyway. So that's going to sort the agenda, specifically by heuristic. So best first is sort of like all of the branch and bound variations, except that it doesn't use path blame. So that also means that it's not optimal. The reason why these heuristic searches are not guaranteed to find the shortest path is you can imagine a heuristic that's zero everywhere. That's going to be admissible and it's going to be consistent, but it gives you absolutely no information. So just having a heuristic alone isn't enough to find the shortest path. So what about, what does Beam do? Only lets you have a certain amount of things from each level in your queue. Stack. Yeah, so being limits you at each level, is that going to work in a more like depth first search or more like breadth first search? Breadth first? Yeah, it's going to be more like breadth first search because we're expanding one level at a time. So at each level, you're only going to keep a certain number of things from your tree. So like if you have some, some search graph, this is just an arbitrary graph. And let's say S goes to A, B, and C. But you have the beam width. Of two, then you're only going to keep the best one of these. Or the, sorry, the best two of these. So you're going to get rid of whichever one is not the best. And then you would extend each of these guys. How many would you keep out of these six? Two. Two again. So you would get rid of a bunch of them, and maybe the best two are those ones. So at each level, you're going to only keep the beam width worth of path, paths. So beam is going to be more of a Q structure. How about all the branch and bound variations? <coughs> is it a Q? So do they sort things? Do you want to do an example problem to find out? I don't think you can have like BFS, but like, so you great. take like the best thing off of the, like the shortest path off of the agenda. Yeah, so the thing is branch and bound is looking at all of the paths in the agenda and choosing the, the shortest one, so it doesn't actually matter which end of the agenda you stick stuff into. Because every time you're sorting the entire agenda, you're either sorting the entire agenda by shortest path or just searching the agenda for the shortest path. So we're going to say that that's sorting the agenda. So I guess specifically, best first was the sorting by heuristic, and branch and bound is sorting by path. What about branch and bound with an extended set? How is that different from plain branch and bound? Yeah, you use an extended set. Does that affect how you sort the agenda? No, so you're, so, you're still sorting it just by path length.
What about branch and bound with a heuristic? You still sort the agenda, but what are you sorting by? Path lane plus heuristic. You're sorting by path lane plus heuristic. <coughs> And then, how about A star? Both. Let's both. How is A star different from branch and bound with a heuristic? Yeah, it just has an extended set. So that's going to be the same thing there. OK, so now I figured out which searches sort the agenda and which ones don't. We're going to sort of ignore British Museum here, because it, it doesn't really matter how you perform British Museum, as long as you enumerate every possible path. Which of these searches require edge weights in your graph? Does hill climbing? So what does hill climbing use to decide what's the best path? Heuristics. Heuristics. So these, these informed heuristic searches are not actually using path length at all, which is why they're not guaranteed to find the shortest path. So that doesn't actually need edge weights. What does need edge weights? Branch and bound. Branch and bound, because that's sorting by path length. And to figure out path length, you need edge weights. So all of those guys are going to need edge weights. And then which ones need a heuristic? some function where you're deciding which path is the best one. So what's the search that has some function that decides which path is best? Best first. Yeah, best first does that. Are there others? Just hill climbing? Yeah, hill climbing does. So it's, it's choosing only among the paths that it's currently looking at. It's not choosing among the entire agenda. But it does use the cost function. What else? A star. Yeah, A star does, because that's sorting by path length plus heuristic. So is beam. So does yeah, beam is using the heuristic to decide which ones are the best, which ones to keep at each level. What? It's like all of the ones that use path Yeah, exactly. All of these that are that are sorting the agenda are going to use some sort of cost function to decide what's the best path. And a couple other questions we can ask. Which of these are optimal? Which ones are guaranteed to find the shortest path? The answer is already on the board. Yeah, British Museum, I heard branch and bound. Which of these variations of branch and bound? Well, it depends on the heuristic. Yeah, so those are always. This one, if it's admissible. And A star, let's say if it's consistent. Or if you use a special extended set, but in general, if it's a consistent heuristic. Uh, two more questions. Let's say, assuming that you're allowed to backtrack, which searches are guaranteed to find a path, if, find a path, if one exists? shortest path, you just want to find some path. Which of these searches will find you a path? Or which of these searches might not find a path? Hill climbing. 
Well, hill climbing, if, let's say, uh, assume that you're allowed to backtrack. Beam, yeah. So backtracking means that you can go back up the tree, but it doesn't mean that you can uncross off nodes that you've thrown away. So beam is going to put an X there. Beam is not guaranteed to find a path. But as long as you're backtracking, then hill climbing will find one. What about everything else? Will everything else find a path? Yeah, because they're not throwing away any options. Not good. Okay, then last question. Which ones are guaranteed to find the path with the smallest number of nodes? Yeah. Um, why did, for when you did, um, like guaranteed to find a path, or mm -hmm. optimal rather, and when you got rid of using the extended set, it only had to be admissible and not consistent? Yeah, that's a good question. So the, the reason why we got screwed in that screw case graph was because we were using an extended set. Whereas, and so the extended set told us, even though you've seen node C before, you've seen node C before, so you're not going to extend it, even though you've now found a shorter path. So we had something where we had C with a value of two, and then C with a value of ten that was extended to G. And so the extended set said, no, you can't do this because you already found it. But if you, the question was, why did this one only need an admissible heuristic? Okay, that makes sense. So, so that's, that's because if we weren't using the extended set, then we would be allowed to extend the C again. And then you won't be screwed by the admissible, by the non-consistent heuristic. Questions on any of this? So to, if you want to answer questions about which type of search you can use, it's good to think about things like, do you have this information? Do you know about heuristics and edge weights? 